there, my name's Jay, and I've got the absolute pleasure of being joined by... Me, Charlie. Hello, Charlie, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, how are you? Very, very good. Now, if I can paint a picture, uh, I've, we've got lots of colourful models in front of us, which we're going to be having a chat about today. What have you brought in for us, mate? Well, I've brought in a few of my model trams that I've had for a while. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not able to bring all of them because I have over 20. Twen over 20? Yeah, and they range from all different sizes, from miniature to about 30 centimetres long. That's, and that's like quite a, high. That's like a ruler, right? Yeah, quite that's, long. That's a, that's, a big, that's a big model. Awesome stuff. We'll come into, um, we're coming up in a little while. We'll be going into the specific details um, of these models that you've got, all of which look amazing. Um, let's start with uh, one of them, all right? A little bit later also, we're going to be looking at models you'd like to get in the future. Um, but first of all, we've got some models here. Which one are we going to have a chat about first? I think we should have a chat about the one I've had for the longest. Yeah. Out of the ones I've got here, not all of them. But this is a Trich Tramway livery tram made by Lido. And the Le Lido would make these trams in all sorts of variations. And they could normally be used for advertising, such as I've, we've also got a Nestle's Nestle milk that I'll talk about in a bit. Mm -hmm. But they'd get painted in liveries and sold by the companies that have that livery. Yeah, because effectively, these are moving advertisements, aren't they? They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're moving advertisement boards, which before the internet, which of course we know is it's just part of our lives, this is how people got their word around, right? Yeah. And what's, what does this one actually say on it? This one is the trick. Tramway Village. Okay. Which I don't know where it came from because I got given it, but I'm guessing it was sold by the tramway, which I'm guessing is now a heritage museum. I got you. So this is this is promoting the, yeah. the, 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 the heritage uh, place in in Critch, I think it is. Awesome stuff. A lovely pink tram. I must say, overall, they're all in really good condition. Uh, it feels a little bit like we're on the Antiques Road Show and we're going to discover a little bit more. We'll come over, there's one with a horse, we're going to come over to that in a moment. But before that, you did allude to a Nestle milk one. Let's have a look at that. It's in a red livery. Red is usually the livery of what place? London. Mm. But it would go up and down the country, but the red and the white most of the time would be London. Okay. And this one is a London United... Um, open decker tram so it may be good as in you can see but in England it rains quite a lot so at the same time it might not be good having an open deck tram I agree do you think that might be why people generally wore hats back then you know would have had a top hat or a yeah probably may have been because they're getting on the tram and yeah this one this Nestle milk uh, tram which actually has number Number 50 on the front, which is going to Westminster. People are going to get wet if it rains. That's the difference between that one and the Critch one. Anything else on the London tram? Um, well, I've already gone over the fact it's open decker and it's got the London livery. Mm. But I think that's about it for the difference between those two trams. Okay. And up next... What tram are we going to look at now? We've got a selection here. Oh, we're going for this one. It's got a black roof, a green and cream livery, I guess. Uh, over to you, Charlie. What is it? So this one is a Blackpool tram. Mm. But it was a Blackpool tram from around before the Blackpool balloon tram, which I'll talk about next. Coming up, Blackpool balloon tram. Mm -hmm. This one is number 40. It's a Blackpool Fleetwood tram. And as you just said, it's in the green and cream livery. Mm. And they would have operated up and down the seafront before the balloon trams came along. What I find bizarre, though, is that the, the Blackpool one has a roof, but the London one doesn't. You would have thought it would be the other way round. Some 
the London ones did have roofs, most of them did, but I guess that one's just to make it stand out more from all the other trams. Yeah, and possibly you can, uh, I don't know, wave to the Queen as she looks out of her window, or whoever was monarch at the time. Um, awesome stuff. Uh, what This Blackpool one, though, it does move on to something else a little bit later, doesn't it? This is a... Uh, well, what era is the the first one we've looked at? Do you know? This one, yeah, would probably be about World War One, right? To about nineteen fifties ish. Okay, and then thereafter, it starts to become a little bit more refined, doesn't it? What's yeah. this one? This one is the Blackpool balloon tram. Okay, which are only ever used in Blackpool, so that's why they get a name all to themselves. Right, awesome. This one's the 1960s, again in the green and cream livery, but they would come in other liveries, such as dark blue. But this one, it's all really good, and it's to double O scale. That's 1 to 76. But the only detail that's wrong about it mm. is the electricity connection, because... It should be one that folds out, then back up again, but this one just goes straight out. Okay, so the model, the makers have sort of opted for, well, they got it wrong. Probably to make it easier because um, the folding ones are a lot more difficult to make without snapping them. Mm, I'm with you. And I think overall it's sort of... They've done a magnificent job, haven't they? Definitely. It's got all the details inside as well as outside. And this was the first tram of my Corgi Trams collections. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, was the first ever model tram I got. Oh, really? That's fascinating, because I think next next week I'll bring along um, a, a, a trolley bus that I've got. So not a tram, but a trolley bus. Um, part of sort of the evolution, I guess, of trams. Uh, 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 but uh, I'll bring that along. That's an Ipswich, uh, Ipswich Corporation Transport ICT one. Um, but on the side of this one, we actually have the Blackpool um, tram here, the balloon tram. We actually have Bruce Forsyth. Do you know who Bruce Forsyth is? No. Very famous comedian uh, 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 um, of uh, back in the day. Um, and it says, "I'm in charge. Showtime, North Pier." So. As we were saying, it's promoting his gig. Yeah. He can't promote it on Instagram. He's got a tram. Insta tram. There we go. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have one more uh, to have a look at. We're going way back now, aren't we? We're sort of going before this... these, these ones from around World War One, aren't we? Yeah, definitely a long time ago. have no idea what year these would have been in service. Mm. But this one is a Lido limited edition horse-drawn tram and it's the 1995 Days Gone Collectors Club limited edition tram. My goodness, yes. And it's painted in quite a flashy livery of having gold and bright red on it with mm. blue seats. I think the original models would have came with people but I got this one second hand so unfortunately it doesn't have the people. No, the people have gone, but absolutely fascinating. It's very open, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. These wouldn't have been good in traditional English weather. No, sort of a primitive design where we've got some likely to be made out of wooden seats, not really uh, much cushioning on those, and uh, I don't suppose there'd be much suspension on it either. I think it's going to be a pretty bumpy ride on that one. Um, of all of them, have you got a favourite that you've got here? Of the five I've got here, mm. it would either be the horse-drawn tram or the World War One Blackpool tram. Okay. Not sure why, I just, I think I like the livery of the Blackpool one. And the horse-drawn tram one is also my mum's favourite because she loves horses. Yeah, and the horse is in fine condition, we can see. Has it got a name? No, haven't mm. named it yet. Hmm, I'll have to think about that. Um, 
thank you very much, Charlie. This uh, We should be getting to the end of our destination, or towards our destination, where we have to park up the tram and be, uh, come back next week. Uh, but before we do that, are there any trams or trolley buses or any particular models that you would like to get in the future? Something you don't have, one of those golden gems that we don't, you know, we don't quite have yet. As we said last week, I went to the Seaton Tramway, uh-huh. and I've recently found out that Lido make their trams in the Seaton Tramway livery. So I, I really want to get one of them because it's a model replica of the one I went on. Mm-hmm. And also, I collect Lesneys, which are pre-matchbox era models. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they do a Duke, uh, they do a train called Duke of Cornort. Can you, is that how you pronounce it? I think, yeah, I think that's uh, Connaught, I think. Yeah, that, that's a steam train, so I'd like to try and save up for that as well. Oh, okay. Excellent stuff. Um, good luck. With finding those as well, because some of them are quite rare to find, aren't they, these models? Yeah, especially in good condition. And, uh, yes, yeah, such good condition as yours are. Uh, next week, we'll be back with some more uh, trams and trains, and, well, we'll insert other bits of transport as and when we, as and when we feel like it, I think. Charlie, yeah. next week, what are we going to be talking about? Next week, we'll be looking at places that both of us have been. Mm-hmm. And I'll be doing special information and memories on the Ipswich Transport Museum. Absolutely. And we should give them a plug as well as next week now, but they're actually going to be open very soon. They're opening again in May, but of course we have more details on that next week, the specific date, and stories and memories that we both have of Ipswich Transport Museum. Charlie, it's a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. Bye. Bye Bye-bye, everyone.